3ds Max provides many helpful tools for rigging and automation, and one of the easiest and simplest to use is wire parameters, also known as parameter wiring. And way back in the day when this was first introduced, distinctly remember at the SIGGRAPH conference, an Autodesk employee described wire parameters as, quote, expressions for dummies. Now that's a little bit of a derogatory expression, but it does get the point across, which is that using wire parameters, a non-technical user can easily make connections between various scene tracks, and that user won't have to worry too much about things like variables in the expression controller dialog. Wire parameters also works well with on-screen manipulators, and we'll use both of those features today in order to use a single slider to control the rotation of both of these elements here, both those objects on the end of the robot arm. I'll select both of those and then press the Z key to zoom in, select one of them and it's robot claw right, and the other one is robot claw left. Let's create a manipulator in order to control the rotation of both of these at once. Go to the create panel, to helpers, and from the pull down list, choose manipulators, click the button labeled slider, and click in the viewport to create the slider manipulator. Right click to exit that creation mode. If the manipulator is not selected, then it will be displayed in yellow. If it is selected, it will be displayed in white. With it selected, let's go into the modify panel and give it a name, change the label to grip, and then we need to set up a minimum and maximum value here. And those are going to be rotations in degrees. Let's figure out what those minimum and maximum values should be. I'll select robot claw left and test out its rotations. Go to the rotate tool. And in order to know what the actual rotation values are, we need to be in gimbal coordinate system. Go up to the reference coordinate system pull down list and choose gimbal. And now the values displayed in the transform type in down here are going to be the true rotational values for the selected object. And I've got angle snaps turned on right now, so it's gonna snap to five degree increments. Let's just test this. I'll rotate it around the green Y axis and in the transform type in area and also in the on-screen readout, we're seeing the rotation values. And by playing around with this, I can figure out that the maximum rotation value I'm going to want is 65 degrees and the minimum is going to be negative 25 degrees. Let's verify that by selecting the other object, the robot claw right, rotating that over 25 degrees as well, and that looks about right. Okay, let's restore those back to zero. Select them both and type in a zero in the y-axis in the transform type in area. And now they're back to zero. Okay, we can now make some adjustments to the manipulator itself. And in order to do that, we want to be in select and manipulate mode. Activate that, and then also use the Move tool. And if you click on the box on the left side of the manipulator, you can move that manipulator around. Click on the diamond on the right side, and drag left to right to change the length. And we can also change the value, too, by clicking on the arrow. If we go back to Manipulation Mode Off and select the object, then we can see that the current value is displayed here and also in the Modify panel. Okay, so now let's set up those minimum and maximum values that we determined. So the minimum will be negative 25 degrees and the maximum will be 65 degrees. Now our manipulator is all set up. Let's go ahead and wire it up to the rotations of these two objects. With the manipulator still selected, go into the animation menu and open up Wire Parameters parameter wire dialog. And on the left is the driver and the selected object is already highlighted there. Open up the slider manipulator 001, little plus sign there, then open up object and select value. This is going to be the driver. And now we want to select the driven track over here on the right. And an easy way to do that is to select the object that we want to drive and then in the parameter wiring dialog, there's a button here. It looks like a little refresh. It's two arrows. Click on that, and then we're taken directly to that object's tracks. 
Open that up and then open up Transform, Rotation, and select the Y Rotation track. And now we have the ability to send that information from the left to the right, or from the right to the left, or both. In this case, we want the control direction to go from the driver on the left to the driven on the right. So click the right facing arrow. And now what we see is there's a string down here that says value, and that is simply the parameter name of the driver. So click the connect button, and that connection's been made, and the driver is shown in green and the driven in red. So let's test it. We'll go over to our manipulator, and we need to be in select and manipulate mode, and then click and drag, and something's happening, but it's kind of going out of control. And the reason this is happening is because our values here are in degrees, but the internal units of 3ds Max are radians. So we need to convert from degrees to radians. In the expression field at the very beginning, type in the following, lowercase d, e, g, uppercase t, lowercase o, uppercase r, lowercase a, d, and then a space. Deg to rad, degrees to rad, and then a space, and then the value. So what this is going to do is simply convert the value to radians. And then click the update button and test it. Click and drag. And now we've got one of those parameters wired up. All right, pretty cool. So we want to do the other one now. So select the other object, which is robot claw right, and then click on the refresh button and then open up Robot Claw Right, Transform, Rotation, Y Rotation. Once again, click the control direction from left to right, and we can now put in that same string that we did before, D-E-G, capital T-O, capital R-A-D, and then a space, deg to rad value, and click Connect, and then test it. And it's not quite right because these two need to be opposite signs. This one needs to be negative. Back in our parameter wiring dialog, we just need to make this value negative. And to do that, we want to put a minus sign directly in front of the word value. And this is not actually doing a subtraction because the minus sign has no space after it. So what we're saying here is we want to convert the negative value to radians. All right, cool, now click Update. And it should work just fine now. We can now adjust our grip value. And indeed, we've successfully used a manipulator to wire parameters on two tracks. And that's how to use the parameter wiring dialog in conjunction with an on-screen manipulator. If you want to, you can hide that manipulator like any other object. Just put it into a layer if you wish and hide that layer so you won't be distracted when you're working on other things.